Lily, what are we going to do with you? Hey, what are we going to do with you? Scott's first two patients are in Teddington. Sisters Pickle and Lily are waiting with their owner, Sally. For the last year or so, they have been a bit incontinent. Well, for most of their lives, we've noticed little bits of dribbling, but it has started to get worse to the extent now that quite often they're lying there and you just literally see urine dribbling out of them and they've absolutely no idea that that's happened. So, yeah, it's starting to get quite annoying now, not to mention very wet and smelly. <laughs> Sally and her daughter Katrina love their two girls. Who's my big boy? Big boy, yeah, look at me. But the constant leaking is out of control and they're desperate to get it fixed. Poor little pickle. And now she's weed on me. <laughs> Oh, looks like half wet myself. <laughs> it's just a, a normal day in the household, eh? I'd really like to have two dogs that don't leak all over the floor. I'd like to be able to walk into my house, sit down on the sofa and not shoot straight back up again with a wet bottom. So definitely hopeful that Scott will get to the bottom of all of this. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you, mate? Mm -hmm. Good. How are you? I'm really good. I'm nice really. I'm looking forward to seeing you. these girls. Oh, well, please come and meet them. What is that smell, Sal? Oh, sorry. There's a serious pong, <laughs> yeah, isn't there? In here, there's a I know, serious smell. Oh, and actually, look. Oh, lovely. I wonder what the smell was, and uh, there's the answer. Who's the culprit for that? Which one? Hey, who's looking sheepish? Walking into Sally's house, straight away I'm hit with a wall of smell. It's not a good smell. This isn't potpourri. This is the smell of wee. Not a very good start. Yeah. So do they both wee around the house? They do. At the moment, Lily's probably slightly worse. You can actually see it flowing out of her sometimes. And how often yeah. are we talking? Once or twice a day. Once or twice a day? Yeah. Your dogs are peeing in the house? Well, they're not peeing, they're dribbling. Oh, Sal. <laughs> The obvious problem in Sally's house is that she is wading through puddles of wee. Lily has urinated on the floor and she doesn't know that she's done it. And that's clearly a worry. <laughs> Can I have a little feel of you? All right. Sal, is there ever any blood in the urine at all? Not that I've noticed. Okay, so it just looks like normal old yeah. wee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just inappropriately positioned. Yes. <laughs> Usually on my lap. <laughs> Seriously, they wee on your lap? Yeah. Oh, that's great. But grim. they don't wee, they dribble. I love the way that you're making excuses for them, which is lovely. <laughs> I know, I know. But your version of normal is not normal. No. Having an examination of the two dogs, I can see they're very healthy and they're clearly much loved. But there is a problem here. I'm not sure what it is. It could be a congenitally inherited condition that they've had since they were puppies. It could be infection. It could be hormonal urinary incontinence. There's a lot of question marks here. So what I need to do is to take both dogs into the practice where I'll understand exactly what's going on. Come on, let's say bye to mommy. Bye bye. See, See ya. Later, Scott. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, girls. Off to the practice with you. Come on. Yes. Try and cross your legs for the journeys, would you girls? Yeah. Thank you. These girls are uh, weeing all over Sally's house. Now, Jess, if you want to take her through to x-ray. Back at the practice, Stop. Scott is going to x-ray both of Sally's dogs, starting with Lily. But first, a special dye is being injected, which will outline the urinary tract and show up any abnormalities. Right, x-ray. We take a series of x-rays. It will look a little bit like a roadmap of the urinary tract and see if there's any reason why these girls are incontinent. It's weird. Very strange indeed. Mm. I'm doubting myself now because I'm just <laughs> doubting what I'm seeing on x-ray. The x-ray looks like there's one kidney, which is pretty strange. Uh, and it also doesn't really explain why the dog's incontinent. Establishing that Lily doesn't have a left kidney, I don't exactly know what to think of it and it's certainly not something that I was expecting. I then moved to do an ultrasound on Pickle because I just want to make sure that she does definitely have both kidneys. Okay, so there's one. Yeah, and there's, there's the second one. Thankfully she does, but I still feel that as these sisters are genetically related and the problem with Lily is likely to be a congenital abnormality from birth, 
They can both share similar issues. Good girls, that's it. Come on, come on. Where's mummy? Hello, baby. Hello, mummy. Sunny has arrived, <laughs> hopeful that Scott has found the reason for her leaky oh, dogs. I need to sit down after oh, dear. that. <laughs> so I have done a excretory urography. It's basically a contrast yeah. Yeah. image of the urinary system. Yeah. And it seems like Lily doesn't have a left kidney. What? Yep. Ooh. I then just ultrasounded Pickle yeah. to make sure that I wasn't going mad <laughs> and I could see that there is actually two kidneys in okay. her abdomen. Right. But this is clearly some sort of congenital abnormality, so from birth. Okay. So we need to send you up to the Royal Veterinary College where the specialist there will do a CT scan and that'll give a lovely 3D image of everything that we need to check out and see what's what and what's not. Mm -hmm. And also do a cystoscopy, which is basically where they put a camera into the bladder and they have a look around, not only to see where the ureters come from the kidneys into the bladder mm -hmm. and where they drain. Yeah, okay. All right then, Sal. Okay, well, thank you very much. So now I'm going to be sending Sally and the girls up to the Royal Veterinary College where the specialists will be performing some more tests and then hopefully try and fix them. Bye, mate. Okay. Bye, bye, Scotty. Bye. If he wants them to go up there, they'll go up there. Trust him implicitly. But, yeah, I'm worried. Hmm. Go on, then. let's go. Scott's now taking a break from his London practices and heading west to Wales to polish up his skills as a farm vet. I'm really excited to be heading out to West Wales again. The people that live out here are absolutely awesome. They're so down to earth and they're really dedicated to the animals that they look after. So I'm honoured actually that they've asked me to come out and help. Scott's first stop will be the historic town of St Clair's. Now, last time I was here, I really had to earn my stripes as a farm vet, doing things that I haven't done since my uni days. It's got a lovely temperament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> oh, man. We'll make a farm vet of you yet, Scott. <laughs> Welcome to Wales. <laughs> this time, I'm going to have to step up another level because it's all hands on deck. The vets are so busy this time of year, so I just hope that I can keep up with the pace. Scott will be based at the Market Hall Practice, which looks after local pets as well as animals at surrounding farms, and he's checking in with head vet David Stark. Morning, David. Good morning. How are you? Good to see yeah, you again. Great. So what have we got planned? Uh, lots of lots of carvings, lots of sheep, lots of cattle, hopefully lots of horses. Yeah, those lined up uh, for the week, Scott. All right, well, I've got some overalls in the car, I promise. So, oh, great. Um, Good. So go and chuck them on. Yes. Awesome. Great one. Nice one, Dave. Good okay, to see Scott. you. Cheers. Scott's being put straight to work after a call about an emergency at a local dairy farm. A Jersey cattle owner has called to say that one of her girls is very sick. All we know is that this poor girl isn't eating and she does have a calf. Scott will be working under the guidance of vet Vicky. Right, time to get okay. suited up. Yep. She deals with big farm animals yes. on a daily basis. What we need? But Scott hasn't done any major procedures on a cow since his university days. Oh my goodness, here we go. Waiting anxiously is dairy farmer Helen. She's worried about her much-loved cow, Athena, who's recently become a new mum. She just looks generally miserable um, and not happy with life. We never have problems with calvings of the jerseys. So I'm a little bit nervous. Hi, I'm Scott, how are Hi, you? I'm Helen, how are Hi, you? Hi, Helen. And who's this gorgeous beast? This is Athena. Athena. Very beautiful. All right, so what are the issues that you've been having with your cow? Um, she's been calved just under a week, and we've noticed the last few days um, that she hasn't really been eating as much as I'd like her to. She just looked a little bit depressed. Right. First thing, uh, let's have a little listen to her heart. That's all clear, so uh, just listen to her stomach. Oh, do you want to have a listen? Mm. 
there's not a huge amount of noise going no, on in there. Quite which quite quiet. Yeah. That room and's not moving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just not functioning no. at the moment. Yeah. All I can hear is complete silence, and that's a real concern. The four stomachs inside a cow should make a lot of noise, and when they don't, that's a worry. I believe that this cow might be suffering with a condition known as left displacement of the abomasum, or LDA. It's basically where one of the four stomachs is twisted and can commonly happen after a cow has had a calf. The way that LDA is diagnosed is by using percussion, so basically tapping on the side of the abdomen of the cow. You hear it? Oh, wow, yeah, there. there. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That is a lot different to the surrounding area. It's very distinctive sound, isn't it? Yeah. We can hear a very tinny sound, which basically sounds like a, a bag, which is the abomasum, filled with gas, it's, so it sounds a little bit like a drum. So pretty much part of the stomach that's here needs to go over there. Yeah. And the only way to do that is by reaching in. Um, pulling it back. Pulling out. it out. Athena at the moment's uncomfortable and she isn't eating and she will lose weight quickly. So we need to intervene with this surgery. First, I just need to give it a little local. Yeah. Yeah. In Wales, Scott and farm vet Vicky are about to begin critical surgery on new mum Athena. You're not going to like this, yeah. You're going to jump a bit. She's being given a numbing injection in her side, but she'll be awake throughout the procedure. Good girl. I know, I know. If a large animal is calm enough and quiet enough with just a light sedation and local anaesthetic at the site of the incision, it's far better for them and it's far safer as well. It's a nice happy jogs for you, sweetie. After calving, the much-loved Jersey cow has been left with a badly twisted stomach. One of our stomachs is full of gas and has moved to the wrong place. So uh, we need to get that back in the right place. But sometimes you can open them up and they've been twisted for a long time and the abdomen has started to react. So until you open them up, you don't really know what you're going to find. Surgeries involved in any animal. We haven't had a huge amount of them done here either. So, from an owner's point of view, it's it's a little bit nervous to watch it happen. Yeah. I can just feel across. I can feel a nice big stomach on the other side. Right. So now we're going to deflate the uh, stomach. So this deflate. is quite a dangerous moment, really, isn't it? Vicky? Yeah. This is quite a big needle, and idea is we want to just take the needle across, put it straight into the. Abomasum mm -hmm. and get the air out. Back in my uni days, we learned about farm animal stuff, but it's about 20 years ago, so I do need to refresh my skills with these fantastic farm animal vets. So, mm -hmm. if you're going to stab anything, stab yourself. Right. <laughs> so, you okay. want to take that? Yeah. So, guard it. I just want to keep that on there and guard it with my life. Yep. All right, Athena, you can trust me, sweetie. So, round, round the intestines. Oh, my goodness, that is actually quite hard to do. Yeah. Oh, without know. stabbing yourself. Yeah. So once we open up the cow, you're going in blind. It's just experience and knowing what's normal and navigating under and round quite important bits of anatomy. And then? Put just straight in. Straight in. As far as you can. Okay. And then it's going in now. There we are. So the gas that comes out, that's basically fermented grass. That's what they're eating at the moment. And it's sat there for a good couple of days, so it's quite rancid to kind of smell, really. <sighs> My heart is actually going. Doing that. <laughs> so that is, that's, that's frightening, is uh, performing a procedure like that, a massively sharp needle around this poor girl's organs. Protect the needle, bring it back out. Okay. Yep. Okay, please don't move. Okay. <laughs> Good girl. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. An antibiotic spray completes Athena's treatment. Um, great. Good job. Athena is immediately looking so much brighter. She just looks like a different cow already. I was really happy with how Scott and Vicky worked together to get it done. So it went really well. You couldn't have gone any better. Before Scott leaves, he wants to see how Athena's six-day-old calf is coping without his mum. This is Athena's son, Achilles. Hello, mate. Oh, hello, beautiful. Whilst mummy was getting surgery, you didn't get your breakfast, did you? Hey, no, you didn't. Here we go, you gonna have some? There you go. There's the good stuff right there. Oh, yummy. Boy. It's been a really incredible day today to be able to work alongside Vicky and to help 
Athena, and now to feed this adorable little youngster. It's been a great end to an absolutely perfect day, and now I can see the benefits of being a farm vet. Pretty nice, really. Well, they seem to enjoy that, and hopefully Athena will be able to do the job moving forward. Yeah, she's already looking a lot brighter, so hopefully he'll be back in with her tomorrow morning, hopefully, to just have a little bit of a, a sack, and then she can go out with the rest of the cows then. Yeah, unless you want to come home with me, eh? Eh? Yeah. Come on, good girls. Let's go find out what today he's got to bring, shall we? Back in town, Sally has arrived at the Royal Veterinary College with her two bulldogs, Lily and Pickle. Come on, Lou. Good girls. Hi there, Sally. Hi, yes. Hi Stein. Hi, Stein. Uh, nice one of the internal you. medicine specialists with my team. Hi, uh, team. And these are Pickle and Lily. That's correct. Did I get it right? Yeah, yes, you did very well. good. <laughs> and uh, they are weeing in inappropriate places, they right? They are weeing everywhere. Very good. Yeah. So, yes, up to us to nice. figure out why that might be happening and please. see whether or not we can do something about it. Pretty please. Very good. Shall we get a room? <laughs> yeah. That's Thank good. you. Follow us. Go on, Pickle, Lily. Here we go. Yeah. Come on, girls. Pickle and Lily are incontinent. We thought it was just a little bit of dribbling here and there, but it's getting worse as they're getting older. They're now starting to lie there and, um, yeah, it's not very pleasant, basically. Nice damp floors, nice damp sofas, house smelling of pee. It's, um, yeah, getting a little bit unpleasant. Hello, you. Internal medicine specialist Dr Stein Neeson will be in charge of the investigation. And we can see the problem in action here with already a puddle being created. So I see many of these cases on a yearly basis, but Lily poses a real dramatic case with the urine dribbling in front of my eyes on the examination table. I can't imagine how difficult it is to have Lily in your own home. So we definitely need to try and fix this. Right, we need to figure out what the detailed anatomy is of both Pickles and Lily's urinary tract mm -hmm. because something is preventing both of them to keep the urine in the bladder. So I would suggest that we use a CT scanner to really get down and dirty with the mm -hmm. anatomy of uh, both Lily and Pickles. What started off with just being a few dribbles is now turning into puddles and I think before long we'll be turning into lakes. Lily is first in the CT machine. When Scott x-rayed Lily, he discovered she had only one kidney. So the fact that Lily has only got one kidney is slightly odd, but that sort of gives me a hint that I should be open-minded as a vet to look for other abnormalities that Lily was born with. The one point that I'm looking at here is this white dot which is the tubing that normally goes from the kidney to the bladder. What happens here with Lily is that this tubing is actually ending up very, very late into the urinary tract in the bit that we call the urethra, which is not in the bladder anymore. So that explains perfectly well why Lily is incontinent, because if your urine goes not into your bladder, but into your urethra, there's no mechanism to stop it from coming out. Now it's Pickle's turn to be scanned. Unlike her sister, Lily, Pickle was born with both kidneys. So we've just done Pickle's CT scan and we've got a double whammy. Pickle does have two kidneys and both kidneys are ending up putting the urine in the wrong place way too far back, so Pickle has got the same problem as her sister. It's time to break the news to owner Sally. So they both have an ectopic ureter, uh, which basically means that we've got a bad connection between kidney and bladder. And we are going to try to create a good connection once again. Um, and the strategy we will be looking forward to trying to use is a laser technique. Okay, so basically you're talking about rewiring my dogs? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> re-plumbing actually. Fair enough. <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant news because it's something we can actually do something about. Yeah, what I really didn't want was to be told that this was behavioural and then it's something that's out of my hands, but this is something that we can actually work on. Surgery on both the dogs will be scheduled for tomorrow. Not quite home and dry, 
but certainly hopefully a lot drier than we were before. In Wales, Scott's next job is with Vet David at a local sheep and cattle farm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. All right. Hi, I'm Scott. How you doing? Good. Scott, Good. this is Hugh. Hey, Hugh. Right. How are you? Good, thanks. So I'm guessing uh, cattle here? No, we're down here. What's yeah. down here? Oh, let's go have a look, Scott. Here they are. Okay. Sheep. Yep. Seeing that my patients are sheep, it does make me quite nervous. We don't have many sheep running around the fields of Richmond. <laughs> yes, we've got two rams here. Okay. And Hugh has asked us to come along to turn them into teaser rams for him. That means that we need to give them a rather indelicate cut, don't we? Yep. Yeah. A teaser ram is basically produced when they get a vasectomy. That means that they can no longer make babies. So basically, they encourage all the ewes to cycle at the same time so that when the real ram comes in, all the females are receptive and then the lambs are born around about the same time of the year. Scott, while you catch them, I'll go get my gear ready. These rams are quite tough and, and they're quite agile. And Scott has got his work cut out. Good luck. Good luck. I can relate, boys. My wife's trying to convince me to do exactly the same thing we're about to do on them. Ouch. Okay, let's go, come on. One thing I do remember about sheep is they can be quite feisty, they can be quite grumpy, and they're very good at kicking. He's bloody strong. In Wales, Scott is trying to catch a ram so he can perform a vasectomy. Bloody Hey, Scott. You're yeah. the wrong one there. <laughs> Hugh is a classic example of a Welsh farmer. Great sense of humour, great fun, very hospitable. Not funny, Hugh. Not funny. <laughs> but more than happy to let the city boy go in and look like a fool. <laughs> OK, come on, mate. Wait. wait. He's not the best at handling sheep, I'm not saying, catching them, but he managed, just about. It was a bit funny, it was a bit entertaining. I wouldn't want to go over there either if I was you. Come on. He really heard what we said we were going to do to him. You can tell he's not keen. He's... On a farm, we have to make do with what we've got. So using a hay bale as a surgical table is all we've got. And obviously it's not the most sterile environment, but we wash up and we scrub up and we clean things as best we can. Right, so if you feel the cord, Scott, you can feel the, um, the part you want to cut out, the vas deferens underneath there. Yeah, so you've got the spermatic cord, which is the blood supply and also the tube that allows the sperm to come to the outside, and that's yes. the one we want to cut. That's the one we want to cut. But there's a whole load of blood vessels coming down here, so we have to avoid the blood vessels. Mm. Otherwise... Yeah, complications. Mm -hmm. Up you get. Come on, Scott, good boy. There we go, good boy. Well done. Oh. He'll soon recover, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right? Yeah. You're quite asleep already, yeah, so Yeah, we're pretty chilled. A world away at the high-tech Royal Veterinary College, Bladder surgery on incontinent bulldogs Pickle and Lily is about to begin. Their condition is rare, so they've been brought to the RVC, where Dr. Roseanne Jepson will perform specialised laser surgery. Both Lily and Pickle have abnormalities in their urinary tract, so they have tubes that connect the wrong components together, essentially. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a laser to try and correct those changes. Laser is a really exciting form of surgery because it's minimally invasive, and this is one of the reasons it's attractive not only to owners, but also to the pets themselves, because it means that their recovery time is much, much faster. Okay, I think we're ready to start. 
Lily is first to undergo the procedure. Dr. Roseanne and her team are using a camera to explore Lily's urinary tract. So the kidney that she does have is to her right. right, which would fit with that being the opening to the to right. The right so we're about to start lasering. So we're going to laser the abnormal band of tissue between where the tube from the kidney down to the bladder should be and essentially open that out so that the urine comes down that tube into the bladder um, rather than opening out in the urethra where it is at the moment. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So we've been able to laser the little bit of excess tissue that was present. We did find one slightly unusual finding was that she had a very small blind-ended tunnel, which may have been the opening of the ureter from the kidney that doesn't exist. But so far, so good. Procedure has gone as we hoped it would. Now it's Pickle's turn for the high-tech laser surgery. In terms of the procedure, it is quite technical. Every dog is very different, and so the same would be true for Lily and Pickle, and that creates some of the challenges that we have with this procedure. Although Pickle has both her kidneys, she shares the same genetic abnormality as her sister, which means her internal plumbing is faulty, and she constantly leaks urine. Okay. So both Lily and Pickle's procedures have gone very well today. We'll have to see how well they recover and the next sort of 24, 48 hours really will tell us whether they're going to be continent after this procedure or not. In Wales, Scott's next job is going to be a challenge. I've just had a call from Philip, one of the vets, who needs some help with some horse dentistry. Now, as a small animal vet, we do dental work on dogs and cats all the time, even rabbits occasionally. But my horse dentistry, it's really quite rusty. So I'm really glad that Philip, as an experienced vet, is going to be on hand to help. Waiting for Scott and Philip yeah, are friends Sue great. and Cher and elderly mare Folly. See what sort of mood she's in today? <laughs> Folly! Hello, baby. I've had Folly 28 years now. She was my first horse, my dream horse. Yeah, I love her to bits. <laughs> You're such a good girl, aren't you? You're going to enjoy the dentist today. Her dental appointment, I believe, she doesn't mind too much. Good girl. She tends to be quite relaxed about it, and sometimes she actually looks like she's enjoying it. Come on, then. Oh. Hey, Philip. Hi, how are you doing? I called Scott today to, to give a hand with these horses. I thought it'd be something totally different for him and something he could get involved in. Is that there? Also, it's, it's just handy to have another strong person there to help hold the horses. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm nice Scott. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, you're Sue? I'm Sue. Hi, Hello. I'm Cher. Hi, Cher. And I've heard this gorgeous creature is Folly. It is Folly. Hello, beautiful. They say it's a bit rude to ask a lady her age, but just by the look of her, she looks like she is quite mature. Is that fair? She is mature, like her owner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, um, Folly's about 38, 39 now. Are you? You look absolutely gorgeous. Folly is so beautiful. She's got the most gorgeous blue eyes and she's one of the oldest horses I've ever met. And being that she's a little bit, pardon the pun, long in the tooth, <laughs> uh, she's getting some dental work today. She is, yeah. She hasn't got any problems that I see at the moment, but um, I still make sure that everything's right in her mouth and she's comfortable. Yeah. Horse dentistry is really important in domestic animals because domestic horses live a very long time. Normal horses in the wild live to maybe 20 or so, so the older you get, like with us, the worse your teeth get. So, Philip, this is Folly, the ripe old age of 38. Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Really good. Some horses just keep on going. Yeah. 
And she's looking really good for her age too. She is. All right, so got to put this one on. Yeah, if you just extend it. In order to be able to examine a horse's mouth properly, we need to place a gag, which is a large metal contraption. It allows the mouth to be open wide so it can assess the teeth, we can assess the gums and the tongue as well. So what do you look for first in the examination, Philip? You just check all the teeth, just like your own dentist would do with you. Just goes round, round the whole mouth. So you're feeling for sort of sharp edges, are you? Basically, yeah. It's important that we check anything in the mouth that might be causing the horse's discomfort and stop them eating properly. And also, old horses to be in danger of losing teeth, so we need to keep on top of what's happening in their mouths. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's got a... What's happened there? Ah, oh, she's got a broken tooth. And there it is. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Whoa. Yeah. That is huge. Whereabouts is that come out it's from? It's halfway along on, on, on her offside. OK. Yeah. Halfway along? Yeah, on the bottom. My goodness. Mm. So that was a bit shocking, seeing that drop out of her mouth. You can see that root there has gone rotten. Yeah. It is quite confronting to see a tooth just come out of a horse's mouth like that. But for Folly, she's an old girl and to lose a tooth at her age is quite normal. And the good thing about it coming out whilst we're here is that we're able to check for any underlying problems. I think yeah. that feels OK. It's not really impacting on any of the other teeth and it's not infected. It's not seemingly causing her any discomfort. Yeah, that's, I'm happy with that. The next stage of Folly's treatment is a procedure called floating. Put a bit of downward pressure with this hand then on, on the, yep. the handle. Using in a coarse there. file, Scott will shave down any sharp edges on Folly's teeth. Yeah, you really have to give it a bit more force than you'd imagine. Good girl. Once again, it's just about not taking up too much, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. If you want to do the same then on the bottom. Folly, you're being a very good girl. She's very patient, isn't she? She's, she's, she's just so good. She's such a good girl. Oh, OK, baby. I mean, have a feel, Philip. I think yeah. that feels okay. I'm happy with that. I think it went very well. Yeah. Folly was happy with Scott. She seemed quite relaxed with him. Oh yeah, she did. Yeah. She did, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, there, there you, go. you go, baby. Okay, wonderful. Good, Good girl. girl. Thank you, guys. She's going to feel much more comfortable now. Now we're done with Folly's dental procedure, she's got a perfect smile. I think it's only fair, she's been a good girl at the dentist, she deserves a treat. There you go. Hey, don't tell Mummy. Don't tell Mummy. Yeah. Good ho! It's a busy time for the farmers in the area with everyone getting ready for the local agricultural show. Go ahead. For farmer Go ahead. Clive, it's an especially nervous Go. day. It's my lifetime's work breeding cattle, and it's my father's lifetime's work before me. And the best barometer of judging the quality of your herd is to take them out and compare them with other people that are trying to do the same thing. But several years ago, Clive's farm was affected by the highly contagious bovine TB. Hi. Bovine tuberculosis in this part of Wales has been um, a major issue. And it's a serious problem because it's a disease that affects the lungs and lymph nodes, and uh, there is a risk. Although the farm is now free from the disease, Clive's herd still has to undergo regular testing. Bring the other one in as well. And head farm vet David has just arrived. Okay. Bovine TB is spread by infected badgers, and the ramifications for farmers like Clive are enormous. Just a physical abalone test the whole herd every 60 days is uh, it's a nightmare. Seventh cast grid. You have to keep doing it and tell government find a way of actually getting rid of it so that we have healthy cattle and healthy wildlife. Ooh, it's a bit of a worry. Oh, let me, I'll have to check, Clive. I'll have yeah, to check as well. Oh, fair enough. If the tests return a positive result for TB, Clive's cows will be ineligible to be entered in the local show. All right, seven. Let's check the bottom. Seven, good. Good. That's great. Happy days. Yeah. It's such excellent news for Clive. And I'm also relieved because as a vet, there's nothing worse than bringing the farmer bad news. So to be clear today, it's a big relief. She's fine. She's clear. Great. Good. Okay, show. Here we come. It's really good news. 
the cows are clear to go for our Sinclair show tomorrow. A bit of elbow grease using them tonight and a spit and polish and get them look as good as possible. So I'm very, very happy. Do you reckon they're a bit better? Yeah. I am covered in your hair, Lily. Uh, it's better than being covered in her urine. <laughs> in Teddington, two-year-old sisters Lily and Pickle have recovered well from the laser surgery on their leaky bladders. Both of them seem to be plumbed in a little bit weird. So basically the ureters weren't quite going where they should be, which meant what you were pouring in one end was pretty much coming out the other. Ready? Coverage! Sally was hopeful that after the high-tech laser procedure on both the girls, her days of endlessly cleaning up after them would be over. Which body? Which body? And we were always told it would be a 50% success rate, and it was a 50% success rate. One of them's working, and the other one, unfortunately, seems to be a little bit better, but certainly not where we'd hoped. So we're very pleased with the fact that Lily's now totally dry. It's fantastic. And we're very hopeful that Pickle, with a bit of medication, will have a nice dry dog at the end of all of this. So fingers crossed. Sally is staying positive. It has made a difference. I only have to wash the sofa covers, you know, twice a week instead of four times a week. <laughs> Stinton Wales is almost over, but the locals have asked him to help out with something very dear to their hearts. After a fantastic and exhausting and exhilarating week here in Wales, I'm here at the Sinclair's show. It's all the great farmers of the area coming together with their beautiful animals to show them in the ring. The agricultural show is the highlight of the farming community's year. The St Clair's Agricultural Show is a family show, it's a community show. It's been running now since late 1800s. We seem to be going from strength to strength. Morning, Clive. Morning, Scott. Scott is keen to meet dairy farmer Clive. Say hello, ladies. His cows have passed a TB test and now he's hoping for a win in the ring. And what's the general sort of physical attributes that they're looking for in a winner? In a winner, you, you want a nice, tall, fine-bodied animal. We're talking about cows, right? The cows, okay. yes. We are talking about cows. <laughs> Just checking. It's, it, it's, uh, <laughs> but you want a good-looking uh, good cow. Yeah. It's like it's nice to have a good-looking woman on your arm as uh, well. Well, then. absolutely. <laughs> the cows will need some last-minute spit and polish, and Clive has roped in Scott to help. All right. Don't let go. OK. I won't. What's her name? Tunisia. A very fancy name for a girl from <laughs> Wales, isn't it? I'm feeling confident for Clive, and I really hope that after all the bad luck that he's had, he can have a win here. Shampoo in a cow, so... Uh, not so, something I've done before. I just thought when a cow would come, they'd be cleaned first, but in fact, <laughs> they don't travel well. And I want her shining. You want her shining? Oh, I don't want to see any muck on her okay. whatsoever. Tunisia, you and I are going to have words. A bit like when you used to earn your pocket money and you have to wash your dad's car. I'm not giving you pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get pocket money. Great. <laughs> I've never actually uh, had to shine up a cow before, but she seems to be enjoying it. And in fairness, she looks awesome. Hey, you're ready to go, ready to hit the ring. I'm really hoping today that I get to walk one of the cows into the ring. It'll be quite an honour to be able to do that. And I'm wondering what technique there is. I kind of remember the dog ladies at Crufts that sort of have that jaunty little run as they run in with a big smile on their face. So I'm hoping it's something similar and I hope that I do Clive proud. Are you all right there then, Scott? Back there? Oh, yeah, never been better. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, oh, I hope no one's watching this. Make sure it doesn't miss the bucket. Yeah. I warn you, if she coughs... <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I'll be OK Good luck. Tunisia's been entered in the cow with calf category, where judges will be looking for a wide body, strong legs and big udders. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Clive's couch and decided to have a sit down mid walk, which was uh, <laughs> lazy at best, but she's still looking beautiful. And she's caught the judge's eye, making it to the final two in her class. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, well done, Clive. Good job, mate. Second prize for the day. She's a cracking cow that beat me, and uh, they both looked very well in the ring, so I was, I was quite happy. Scott's a good help. He's, he's marvellous, you know, I couldn't manage without him. He'll have to come every time I go show in. <laughs> Scott's now back on more familiar territory. Wow, there are some very strong contenders. The organisers have invited him to be the guest judge in the canine novelty section. Everyone smile. Everybody was booked in to have their head and ready for Scott at St Clair's show. Oh, you're so pretty. Your dad's done a great job of your coat. Look at that. You're a bit grumpy, but you've got very nice eyes. Wow, that must have taken some work, I would have thought. There's lots of things that I'm looking for as part of this competition, and it isn't just about doggy good looks. I'm looking for healthy body condition, a lovely, shiny, silky, well-groomed coat, beautiful white teeth, and even their age. She's one of the oldest Leos being shown in the country. Of course she was a Leonberger. She's yeah. gorgeous. She's nine in a couple of weeks. Such nice dogs you've got in St Clair's, haven't you? How well the dogs perform in the ring is also important. Very nice. Very pretty girl. Some stiff competition there. Mm. Before Scott announces the winner, he needs to award the runner-up. Reserve champion goes to our lovely old lady right here. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. My pleasure. Oh, beautiful. Well done. Well done. And now it's decision time for the all-important best in show. Well, firstly, can I say you're all winners and they're all fantastic dogs, but the winner of the St. Clair's Agricultural Show 2017 is the Bernese. Thank you, congratulations. <laughs> well done. Good job. Well done. Good girl. Here we go. That's yours. That's yours. Where, should I put it on you or the dog? I'm going to put it on you. You can just say you're the champion of everything. There we go. Well done. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Good girl. I do watch him on the telly. It's not every day you all cuddle with a celebrity, is it? <laughs> the 139th St Clair's show has been a resounding success as Scott prepares to leave Wales for home. Hey Scott, it's been great to have you and the team here again for a few days. Thanks. I think we've all enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, I've really enjoyed myself and uh, hopefully I've impressed you with my farm skills a little bit. Yeah, Scott, I think slowly we can see the farm bed emerging in you. <laughs> Boys, it's been a pleasure. Our pleasure, really good. Thanks for having us. Great having you again. Cheers. Hope Cheers. to see you again soon. All the best. Bye. OK, David. Yeah, let's go, go for a drink. Yeah. yeah, come on. I've absolutely loved my time here in Wales. The country people and their relationship with their animals is just so special. Today's been just a massive celebration of that fact and I've been very honoured to be a part of it.